Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I got a recommendation, or actually about a week ago I got a recommendation from Zbricks who said, uh, how about a mock of the store and a mock of your ideal, ideal store. So I decided I wasn't going to obviously do this with bricks just because I really don't have any use to uh, keep that or kind of show that off at the moment. But I decided I would go into studio and kind of build it in there. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do a time lapse. This is me right now building the store we currently have and I tried to do the best I could to make it uh, one stud wide is about six inches in scale, um, but yeah, go ahead and enjoy this time lapse and then I will show it off. and here we are in the current store that we have that I built in studio it's nothing spectacular I'm relatively new to using this program and I'm not great with any 3d work um, in any program for that matter so not easy to do this um, but obviously we'll start I guess over here with the, uh, the the current wall that we have and like I said I tried to do about six inches but that didn't quite play through as well as I would have liked it to um, so over here this is our uh, our big wall I just made it out of the little one by one tiles and changed the colors um, the plan is like I've said in other videos is to have a small wall that comes out here and then continue around it'll be kind of be like a horseshoe you can go from left all the way around in kind of a circular pattern towards the right where you can pick orders but at the moment this is what we have over here this is a small table where we keep all our small bags and we also have those trays that sit over here and then over here we have our um, whatever you call these, these are the bins, some people call them shoe boxes, you can call them whatever you like on these shelves over here. Now I think in every video you guys have seen these were shifted all the way over to the wall here. We have pushed them to the right if you're looking at them from this direction so that we can begin that expansion of the wall here. And then this is kind of our entrance to the to the area over here now from the large garage door. Of course we have our big uh, parting out tables in the middle, those are just two folding tables right now. They have uh, little extensions on the legs so that they're taller so they're at a height that we can stand up and part them out. Over here, these shelves are for um, sets that have not yet been parted out. So those are, you know, in this case, they're empty in this store. But I, uh, there's some, there's a uh, 16 friend sets actually at the moment on there. And then over here, we have the TV on the wall. This is our small shipping station here. Um, I didn't know how to. I guess I could have just done like a little one by two plate and a tile, I guess, to make the little shipping printer and stuff. But we have our envelopes down here on the shelf, and then uh, this is our shipping area, and this kind of our table has a microwave over here, and then we put the packages on here when they're ready to go to the post office. This is our desk here. We have a um, monitor here for a computer that we use when we're printing out the shipping labels. Um, that goes to the little printer that's over here. And then uh, there are usually curtains that hang right here, so you can't actually see back here, but it is in a garage, so there is a water heater in the corner over here. There's a dryer here, and then there is a... Um, a washing machine there and this is actually a freezer the lid would uh, kind of pop up like a um, almost like a car hood I guess and then uh, that is a large freezer there and then this white thing here is actually a mattress that is against the wall um, you probably don't see it too much in the videos or if you do you don't know what it is and then there's usually also bookcases over here um, but those are not there right now so they are not there here either um, but yeah, this is pretty much our uh, our basic, um, the store we have now. Like I said, we, we plan to do that, that wall here. Um, there is another door over here. This goes to the side of the house. There's a window over here, and then obviously uh, this is the large garage door over here. But overall, I mean, I think this is relatively close to scale. It's about 20 feet by 20 feet. Um, so in this case, I think I did six, uh, about six inches per stud. And the interior being 20 feet by 20 feet is what 42 by it's 42 by 42 studs, so that would make it just about 21 feet, I guess technically. Or uh, was that 21? Yeah, 21 feet, I think. So very close in terms of the size of this. 
so next uh, we'll we'll see a little time lapse of me building the um, the new store here. So this is more than double the size as the plan. And uh, go ahead and watch this, and I'll talk about it in just a second. Right, and here we are in the uh, the new store, the potentially new store, I guess, our future kind of ideal store. Um, and this is made up by two 48 by 48 base plates, which essentially would equal about, let's, uh, we'll say 20 by 40 feet. Now, if you saw in the time lapse, I did add some small 16 by 32 base plates down at the bottom, um, which would have made it 30 by 40 feet. But kind of building this out, I realized we really don't need that large. And obviously, this is not quite to scale. Um, before we actually go rent a place, we would, uh, you know, look at the size of all the drawers and everything a little bit more. But this is kind of how, you know, if we had a, a 20 by 40 foot space, this is kind of, I think, a decent layout. Um, but obviously, I haven't thought too much about this because we're not quite in the position where we're going to move or ready to move yet. Um, so I started out in the time lapse by making this little office over here. You know, this will just be for the... Uh, the stuff where we're just, you know, maybe, I don't know, whatever we're doing in an office there, whether it's finances or stuff like that, you know, just have some basic things in there. Maybe it maybe doesn't need to be this large, could probably be maybe three quarters the size. And then, you know, ideally there would be a window in there, but uh, who knows. And then once you exit this door out of the office, you enter into the parting out area, and these tables would actually be larger than the ones we have now. These would ideally be about, um, you know, it may be two four by eight sheets of plywood, so it's about eight feet by eight feet. Um, hopefully we could build this as opposed to using folding tables. Um, and primarily I'd like to have it at standing height as uh, we have it right now in our store because it is nice to be able to stand out and part uh, sets out as opposed to sitting down and, and trying to lean over the table and trying to reach a drawer or different things like that. Um, of course we brought the TV with us, so that's here on the wall. Um, and We use this when we're uh, adding pieces to the store. If we're doing something on the table, we can use the TV over here as a kind of a large monitor. Or we can always watch Netflix and stuff like that uh, while we're parting things out. Ideally, this would be a nice large cab or countertop here, like ideally 16 feet long. And we can keep all our shipping stations up here and uh, have a second shelf down here for our shipping supplies. And then somewhere over here, maybe the outgoing mail or uh, additional shipping supplies or stuff like that. And then, of course, we have a little small monitor here for a computer, which would help print out the shipping labels. And then we get to the fun stuff, the drawers way over here. Now, ideally, um, or in theory, I guess, this could hold a million pieces it's at the scale that I did this, scaling it with the uh, the other store that I made, our, our store we have now, based on the amount of little squares in that store, which hold about 125,000 pieces, this should hold a million. Um, it probably could hold more or less because I also added all these shelves over here for the bins or shoe boxes. Um, but, you know... The cool thing would be if we were able to get to a million pieces in a, uh, I don't want to say this is a small space because it's nowhere near small, but in a relatively smaller space than like a massive warehouse or something. And then over here in the corner, I just figured, you know, put a couple more shelves that could potentially hold uh, all the sets and things that need to be parted out and stuff like that. Now, I'm probably forgetting a few things. Obviously, I didn't do any crazy details like add the printers and stuff. I didn't feel like that was really necessary. It was kind of cool, though, to be able to lay out some potential ideas for the store. And I like this idea of having kind of aisles that we can go up and down while we're picking an order. Um, you know, and my thought was this would be drawer one, you'd go up, you'd come down this side, you'd go up this side, you'd turn around, come down this side. You know, and you keep going up and down the aisles until you get to the end here. And then you walk over and you pack the order. Um, so, you know, I think there'd need to be a cart or something as we go up and down the aisles picking a million pieces and stuff. But, uh... Haven't found a place for the cups yet. Those went um, maybe on top of these would be a thought. Because um, I'm not sure if we want to go to the ground with these. Because we don't have them on the ground right now. But we also don't, like, they are 
just barely too tall um, for for one of the three people who work in the store, um, who's a little shorter than the other two of us. Um, so, you know, obviously this is just kind of a sketch and stuff, but thanks to Zebrix for recommending this, because this was actually kind of fun, kind of a cool thing to lay it out and kind of figure out, you know, what potentially could we do in the future. Um, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you're not yet subscribed, click the subscribe button. If you like the video, click the thumbs up. And if you have any more suggestions or questions or anything to do with BrickLink or LEGO, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.